Okay, I won't, I won't press you on because we're talking about monotheism, my problems with Islamic monotheism. Now, the second problem is the fact that the pagans used to kiss and touch stones and idols because they thought these stones and idols represented their gods and goddesses that brought them close to Allah. That's in the Islamic tradition. Why did your prophet make it sunnah that if you perform Hajj or Umrah, and if you can, because sometimes the crowds are too much, you must kiss the black stone and touch it and weep on it? Why? I'm not sure, but it's not the same as the pagans. We don't worship the black stone. That's Okay, but you're venerating it for the same reason, because the Hadith say, whoever touches the black stone and kisses it, it will then appear with, with eyes and a tongue, and it will then intercede and defend you before Allah. That's exactly what the pagans said in the Quran. They said, we don't worship them except for them to bring us closer to Allah. So what's the difference? Can you show me the hadith? Oh, yeah. Let me get it for you. Well, I'll have him bring it up. It's a long, lengthy reference, but read it, and he's going to see where the search is come. It's from Fiqh Sunnah, quoting Bukhari, Muslim, and others. Tirmidhi, and if you want to just read it. Among the virtues of the black stone is that Allah, Most High, will raise it up. On the day of resurrection, it will have two eyes with which it will see and a tongue with which it will talk. And it will give witness in favor of everyone who touched it righteously in this world. Among the hadiths concerned by this matter, one, Ibn Abbas narrated, Allah's messenger said, this stone has a tongue and two lips and it will bear witness on the day of resurrection to those who touched it righteously. Now, before you move on, are you paying attention? Do you see yeah. it's going to have a tongue and two eyes on the day of resurrection? Yeah. Let him finish it because I'm going to give you another one with the hadith and we're going to go to the Muslim website itself. Two, Ibn Abbas narrated, Allah's messenger said, this black stone would come on the day of resurrection, having two eyes to see therewith and a tongue to speak therewith, to bear witness to those who touched it righteously. Number three, Ibn Abbas narrated, Allah's messenger said about the stone, by Allah, Allah will raise it on the day of resurrection, having two eyes to see therewith, and a tongue to speak therewith, to bear witness to those who touched it righteously. Number four, Abd Allah ibn Amru ibn al-As narrated, Allah's messenger said, the black stone will come on the day of, res on the day of judgment, larger than Abu Kubai's, having a tongue and two lips. The hadiths are clear. Such hadiths are to be taken as they are, Allah Almighty is certainly able to give sight and the ability to speak to inanimate objects. The bodies are alike. The phenomena accepted by some can actually be accepted by others. Indeed, Allah is able to do all things. The people who have in their heart the sickness of philosophy, mm -hmm. may Allah protect us. Say this is a symbol of the reward of the person who touched the stone. Now, let me explain for him what he's saying. If you say it's a symbolic, allegorical language, may Allah protect us from people like you, because it's literally going to happen. Allah will literally make the stone come to life with eyes and tongues to fight for you and defend you before Allah. And if you say, no, this is allegorical, may Allah protect us from you. So finish it, and then, because we're, we're going to look, see, he's laughing. I was all right. So get to the end of the quote, because then I sent you another link, and I gave it to him. You click that next, but go ahead. The most probable meaning is this one. Even if we can accept the apparent meaning, this is not surprising for someone prone to philosophizing about interpreting the Quran and explaining the Hadith. May Allah forgive him. That comes from Virtues of the Kaaba, 51. This Hadith is weak and yeah, elevated. Stop there. Uh, that was Zaid, but then it gives you sound nation. But you get the quote. Now, the link I just sent you, brother, open that one up because there's another one. There right. you're going to see. If when you open up, it says the Islamic gods unveiled part two. Guys, I've given you the links. First of all, notice what chapter 39 verse 3 of the Quran says. Now, surely, since obedience is due to Allah alone, and as for those who take guardians besides him, saying, we do not serve them, save that they make us nearer to Allah, surely Allah will judge them, it will judge between them in that in which they differ. Surely Allah does not guide him aright who is a liar, ungrateful. Okay, now understand what you read, my friend. The pagans told your prophet, we serve these idols only because we want them to bring us closer to Allah. Now, brother, do command F and put black stone. Command F, black stone, so everyone can see the hadith. Uh, I, I, Sadibi Jubadis? Yeah, whoever he is, man. Don't name your kids after him. Never, never, ever. Reported to have said, I heard Ibn Abbas saying that Allah's messenger said, this stone must come on the day of resurrection, and it will have two eyes to see with, 
and a tongue to talk with, bearing witness for him who caressed it with truth. And the greatest Hassan, it is good, and it's Sunan Ibn Majah. And I think I linked to the online version. You see where it says HTTPS Sunnah.com? Okay. Is that a Muslim website or is that a Christian website? That is a Muslim website. So I didn't make it up. I got it from their own sources. Sunan Ibn Majah, graded Hassan. There you go. Now, when you go back, read the other hadith. Go back to that page and read the second one. And so my question stands after we read it so everyone can see it. And he sees it. I gave him the links. He can read it up on his own. And the hadith right after the one you just read. Ibn Abbas narrated that. The Messenger of Allah said about the blackstone, By Allah, Allah will raise it on the day of resurrection with two eyes by which it sees and a tongue that it speaks with, testifying to whoever touched it in truth. Okay, now here you got it again. It's Hassan grading and you see it. So here you have the black stone that you're supposed to kiss and touch. If you want it to intercede for you, it will come to life. The black stone will be given eyes and a tongue. It will speak. And it will defend you and say to Allah, you used to kiss it and touch it. But then it gets worse because it says that the black stone used to be white, but it turned black from all your sins, the sins of the Muslims that kissed and touched it. Do me a favor, brother, put command F and put in the word black in. B-L-A-C-K-E-N. It's going to take you to that hadith. Ibn Abbas narrated that the messenger of Allah said, the black stone descended from the paradise and it was more white than milk. Then it was blackened by the sins of the children of Adam. What made it black? The sins of the children of Adam. See, he's seeing it. Now, give, give us the, what's the name of the hadith there? What are you reading? Great is Hassan. Hassan Jami Tirmidhi. It's good. Now, my question for you, my friend. It was white. It turned black from your sins because it means it absorbed your sins. From your sins touching it, it took your sins so you could be forgiven. And then it's going to come to life and speak for you. And you still think you really believe in Tawheed? And what difference is this from the pagans? The pagans said to your prophet the same thing. Look, we're only serving these idols and stones because we hope on the day of judgment, they will defend us before Allah. And Muhammad condemned them for being pagans. But then he turns around and does that to the black stone. You Muslims, do what I did. Kiss the black stone. Touch the black stone. It will absorb your sins. That's why it's becoming black from your sins. It's saving you from your sins. And then Allah will bring it to life with eyes and tongue to fight for you and defend you before Allah. So this is your intercessor and savior before Allah. What is this? You believe this? Yeah, we don't we don't fully understand it, but I'm not rejecting the hadith or anything, but because it's authentic, but like I can't fully understand it. Right so now. why do you blame us Christians then for saying Jesus, our Lord, took our sins and he'll intercede for us when you believe that about a black stone? And then you condemn us saying Jesus, who loved me so much, loved you so much, paid the price of your sin to die the death you deserve to save you and he will intercede for you. No, shit, you're Catholic. <laughs> but ah, oh, black stone, the more I kiss it and touch it, smother it. The more of my sins it'll absorb, and then it'll come to life to intercede for me. So the black stone's my savior. You can have Jesus, I'll take the black stone. Really? 